Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing an almost five-year-old Intel NUC and seeing how well it performs. This system was kindly donated by a friend for the video, so uh, thank you Luke. And it spent almost its entire life just in an office. So I imagine soon you'll be seeing a lot of these on eBay as they gradually get phased out. And what I want to know is, can you still get by on all the hardware? Like I said, it's only five years old, but many PCs have come a long way in that time. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into it. On the front, you get two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A ports. I don't know why one is yellow, but as far as I can tell, they're the same. And on the back, you get quite a lot. You get another two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and a Thunderbolt 3. So for its size, they give you a decent amount of ports. And if you want to look at the text on the bottom, feel free to pause. Now let's open it up and take a look inside. Taking it apart is really easy. It's just four Phillips head screws on the bottom under the feet. Now at this point, do not yank it because it's still connected by two wires. But once you take those out, you've got your RAM slots and your NVMe and some internal headers. And here's a closer look at the lid. You got space for a 2.5 inch drive and they also give you a heatsink for that NVMe, which is pretty nice. Okay, onto some benchmarks versus Geekbench 6. Uh, it's alright, yeah. Not too bad, to be honest. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but it's fine. And here are the results for Time Spy as well. Again, not too bad. It's an Office PC, which is what you got to remember. It wasn't meant for games. And just playing around on the desktop with some 4K video. It runs it buttery smooth. So if you want to use it to watch movies and have it as a media station or something, this would be fine. Running some SSX3 on PCSX2. It runs. You can only have it on native though. If you have it any higher than native resolution, which I think is like 480p, you will get some serious slowdowns. So average is 48.6. Very, very playable. I didn't really notice any dips or anything like that. Similar story with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You can only have it on native. If you have it any higher, it just tanks. But that said, it's still playable, it's just not very nice to look at. Now where this PC really shines is indie games. So here I've got Ballistic NG, which is like a Wipeout 3 clone sort of game. And it is so buttery smooth, you wouldn't think it's on like a tiny nut. So if you're a big fan of indie games, this is probably a good PC for you. A fairly new game which has low requirements is Battlebit Remastered. And I couldn't get 60, this is a 1080p, um, but it's playable. You get the occasional dip, but it's pretty fine overall. I still had a good time, so I think you can you can play it just fine. And if you want to drop it down to 720p, you probably get higher than that, you probably get 60. But overall, yeah, definitely playable. And I thought I'd throw in Mirror's Edge just because it's a nice looking game that's very old so it doesn't require much. And I got an average of 61.5 at 1080p which is pretty decent. Like it's, it's definitely playable. Although I should hope so considering it's 15 years old or whatever. But it goes without saying. Any new AAA game you will not have a chance on this so don't even try. But you'd be surprised with how much this thing can actually play and it's not too bad. Now let's move on to some audio levels. Let's see how loud this thing is. In conclusion, as you can see, 
this thing is quite capable, but it's also very, very loud. Something about Windows 11 specifically is just, it's so bloated. So this thing at idle is running at 22 watts. But on Ubuntu, 4 watts under idle. I cannot get over that. 4 watts. So if you just need a machine for basic tasks like surfing the internet and things like that, put Ubuntu on it. And it's incredible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one.